Welcome to Your Fantastic Mind. I'm Jay Watson. This is a show where we explore the mysteries and the science of the amazing human brain. Jamie Dupree has been a radio news correspondent for over 30 years. He's covered politics in our nation's capital most of that time. And then two years ago, he lost his voice, the very tool that helped him make a living. Since then, he has been on a journey to get his voice and his old life back. Let me say it this way. I think Chairman Gowdy's initial assessment is accurate. When you've done something for 32 years, there's an automatic rhythm, one in which your feet know the way, because they've walked these sidewalks, these stairs, these hallways, thousands of times. It is this familiar routine in a career that breeds expertise and burnout. In Jamie Dupree's case, all he has ever wanted to do is exactly this. Digging through all the details on health care reform. A radio news House correspondent for Cox Radio based in Washington, D.C. That I didn't think he needed to do. Right. I should just let it go. Thank you all for being here. This is... Uh... Dupree has covered the United States Congress and politics under six different presidents. In the basement of the Russell Federal Building, Dupree and other journalists await politicians coming and going from the Capitol. Dupree doesn't ask Senator Lindsey Graham a question, and this is why. Every day I, I get up and I hope that overnight it has salt. Two and a half years ago, this 55-year-old married dad of three kids lost his voice. Two dozen experts and thousands of miles traveled around the country later. He is still searching for answers and treatment that will work. Um, during the time, it got worse and worse and worse. And Dupree has flown to Atlanta to see oh, neurologist Dr. Hyder Jenna uh, at Emory Brain Health. All right, good. Open and close your hands for me. Just walk naturally. Okay, I'm just going to put my finger on your chin. I'm going to touch my finger with this. Uh -huh. Touch your nose. Go back and forth. Stop right there. Dupree One does more. well One on tests like not involving speech. Good. Come on back. I want you to say a few things for me. <laughs> we mow our lawn yeah. every year. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we mow our lawn every year. He has a problem that falls in the category of disorders known as the dystonias. Somehow the brain gets the signal wrong and it sort of overdoes the movement. So the muscles contract too strong, they occasionally go into spasm. He had, had Mr. Dupree, when he speaks, his tongue is doing way more than it should. It's contracting, it's going up, it's going out, it's going down, and it shouldn't be doing all that stuff. Dystonia is the third most common movement disorder behind tremor and Parkinson's disease. But Jamie's dystonia is rare and difficult to treat. Scientists know that dystonia begins in the regions of the brain involved in movement control. This motor circuit includes the motor cortex, cerebellum, and basal ganglia. Exactly where dystonia begins is not known. It can be genetic and sometimes triggered by an event. In Jamie's case, he got sick on a family vacation to England and says it morphed into a heart event and a trip to the ER when he got back home. After that, his voice faded away. We believe that it's something you were born with, a, a tendency mm -hmm. to be at risk for this. But you weren't going to develop the problem until you got exposed to something else, which could have been that virus. Mm -hmm. And then those two things together are what triggered the, the evolution of the problem. So it's not the virus by itself. It's the... People like Dupree, who use their voice a lot, develop this type of dystonia more often. Again, it's a bit of a mystery, but it's something about repetitive use that can predispose things to go awry. An expert patient at this point, Dupree asked Dr. Jenna for the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, so the bottom line, the bottom line is that I would call this a segmental dystonia that involves your, your voice box, your pharynx, and probably your tongue and lips as well. Uh, and th this problem is challenging to treat with any of the available options. These options would include medicines, and there are a few others we could try. 
uh, botulinum toxin injections into the tongue, uh, and deep brain stimulation surgery. So those are the three options that we would have. That we might want to Dupree opts to have botulinum toxin injections. The most common botulinum toxin is Botox. The injections will be in his tongue to try to relax and help with the thrusting. Uh, it may help you. Uh, Dr. Jenna has told him like his chances of improvement try. are 50% um, or less. Uh, but we certainly can't promise anything. When it's in your tongue, very hard to treat because the tongue is such a complicated muscle. Uh, we don't think about the tongue as a muscle, but it really is. It's a complicated muscle, uh, and so to get the medicine exactly in the right place at the right dose is hard. But just mm -hmm. putting something in there helps you speak. Toothpick. Toothpick. It's one. You know, if I get in there, it'll sort of move stuff around and I can hold my mouth maybe a different way and uh, a little more out. But something larger works even better? Uh, no. Okay. Um, I can have, you know, that and hold on to my glass a little. It's and clear like, Dupree you know, would prefer more. to be telling a story, um, not be the subject no. of it. But privacy and Washington, D.C. politics do not coexist. Dupree says he was deeply moved when lawmakers spoke of his struggle on the floor of the House. Mr. Speaker, Jamie Dupree is a perfect example of the positive role that devoted and professional journalists play in our free society, and I wish him and his family all the best during this most difficult time. Thank you, Jamie. Godspeed. He wants his voice back for his job. He desperately needs it back for his life. And then my brother, Elizabeth, uh, Henry, Ted, uh, how hard to uh, say their name the right way. In our interview, Dupree holds a marker between his teeth. It helps to control his tongue so he can speak, to describe life as a husband and father who must fight for each word. Anyone who has children, you want to talk to them and give them advice and help. Uh, it's hard to do when go, yes, no, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, wow, uh-huh, well. He has learned to trick his misfiring brain. Yeah, you know, if I uh, try to talk like a muppet, I can get a little more out but it never works for long. Mm -hmm. There is one tiny no. area of his life that has improved. My uh, golf game has improved <laughs> by this half a year. Why? Well, I don't talk to anyone that I'm playing with, so I'm more focused. WSB Washington correspondent Jamie Dupree's One thrilling development is Jamie 2.0. A Scottish company sifted through years of his archived audio and built a voice. He writes his stories and his new voice delivers them. He is back on the airwaves. As the justice has left open the underlying issue of the partisan drawing of legislative district lines. Be sure and check out Jamie's blog at WSBRadio.com where you can also read more about Jamie's new voice. WSB News Time coming up on 1101. We have 82 on Peachtree Street. Good. Damn, that's good. That's good. Still, the most painful moments can come from trying to do the simplest things like talk um, to a friend. I call, um, every once in a while, I call a friend on the phone, and they, um, they can't believe that I'm calling them. And um, I get up the phone and I cry, because um, all I want to do is talk. Um, and uh, the odd part is that when, um, when I cry, I talk better. <laughs> Jamie returns to Atlanta six weeks later for the first set of injections. The muscles that push your tongue out are actually deep in your mouth, under mm -hmm. your tongue, so we usually actually just go right up in here mm -hmm. and we can get to the tongue that way. All right. 
that make sense? Yeah. Give it a try. Mm -hmm. I am going to attach a little device here mm -hmm. that helps us measure and listen to muscles as we're going through. Mm -hmm. You're okay. You can just leave your hands right where they just are. Just a few minutes later, it's done. And that's it. Cool. How you doing? Oh, fine. Now, um, we wait. And, uh, and I hope... Eight weeks later in Washington, D.C. No. Different. No. Um, uh, there was no um, miracle, but... Um, I uh, never thought there would be one. The first injections were conservative to make sure he could tolerate the botulinum toxin. Dupree returns to Atlanta again, this time for more. The results are no better. Have you ever worried that this is going to be the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. Um, look, uh, what am I supposed to do? Curl up in the corner? Give up? I got three kids. I got a wife. Uh, it's not my, uh, um, I am not gonna give up. Not giving up means still coaching his son's baseball team and being a dad and husband and working. In the Senate Radio TV gallery, Dupree runs into longtime colleague Ann Ball. I've had to be resilient, and sometimes I, I think about you and gain strength from you. <laughs> you know? There is no time for self-pity or despair. There are press conferences to attend, politicians to track down, and stories to be written in a tiny cubby filled with gear and memorabilia from yesteryear. <laughs> but it gets the job done, like Jamie Dupree. Things have changed, not all for the better, but he is still here, and he will not give up the search for his voice. the chief of the human motor control section at the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. So we're going to be talking about uh, focal dystonias. Focal means that it's just one place in the body. Dystonia involves abnormal muscle spasms that lead to uh, distorted postures and abnormal motor control. And these focal dystonias can involve different parts of the body. Uh, one of my principal interests has been focal dystonia of the hand. One of the most common is writer's cramp uh, because people tend to write a lot. Um, and another common disorder is different types of musicians' cramp, particularly piano cramp. And again, the frequency of these focal dystonias of the hand relate to a certain extent to the frequency of what people do. Writer's cramp is most common because more, most people write. Uh, in terms of musicians' cramp, piano players' cramp is the most common because that's probably the most common instrument that people play. Writer's cramp, musicians' cramp are not painful situations. Uh, it appears in the patients as a motor control problem. They feel they lose control of their hand as they're doing an activity, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, it isn't painful. Writer's cramp or musician's cramp is a cramp in the brain. It's not a cramp in the muscle. Folk dystonia is a problem of the brain and specifically the brain's control of the muscles. Obviously, when people move, those uh, commands to make movements come from the brain, uh, mediated through the spinal cord. So the brain sends signals down to the spinal cord, the spinal cord sends signals to the muscle uh, to cause the contraction. In dystonia, if you look at the brain, at least superficially, it looks normal. So uh, it's not easy to say, well, there is the problem. 
we can see that there are abnormalities in the basal ganglia. These are the deep, deep nuclei in the brain. And uh, we have evidence, for example, that there is an abnormality of dopamine release in the basal ganglia with movement. There are abnormalities also in other neurotransmitter systems, such as uh, GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So that we are beginning to identify problems. The best treatment options that we have at the moment uh, relate to focal injections of botulinum neurotoxin. And so it's a symptomatic treatment. It is not a etiological treatment for the disorder, but it can help. There are some people that are probably predisposed to this. Dystonia, uh, like almost anything else, is not a single cause. There are probably multiple causes. Did you know that if you're good at spatial memory, like knowing your way around a city, chances are you have an excellent sense of smell. Researchers at McGill University in Canada had study participants take a tour through a virtual city and find direct routes between landmarks. Then they had these 57 participants identify 40 different smells, everything from basil to cinnamon to strawberries. Well, it turns out the people who were best at navigating we're also best at identifying those different smells. And that's because similar regions in the brain, the hippocampus and the medial orbital frontal cortex, are both involved in these seemingly different activities. It builds on a theory that the reason our sense of smell evolved is for navigation, since animals rely on their sense of smell to find food and avoid predators. What makes for a great doctor? Well, some might say a good bedside manner. Others might say a brilliant mind is critically important. But in one class at Emory University School of Medicine, psychiatry residents are learning that art, literature, and music can help them become better physicians. So this is a painting by Diego Velazquez, and he painted it in 1656. A dip into art history is not a typical way to begin class for third year psychiatry residents. These students have had four years of med school and are in the third of four more years of residency before they become full-fledged psychiatrists. Theirs is a world of science, of research, of symptoms and diagnoses. The painting is a very large painting of a slice of life of the royal family. It's a painting ostensibly of the Infanta Margaret Teresa, who is at the time of the painting the only child of King Philip IV and Queen Mariana of Austria, who are the King and Queen of Spain. In psychiatrist Dr. Andrew Furman's humanities-based psychiatric case conference class, art, music, and literature are used to breed a better physician. A lot of what we do in our education of, of future physicians is help them understand the pathology and the etiology of disease. But we don't do as good a job, I don't think, in teaching them how to relate to the person who has the disease. I think there is some curiosity, like, oh, we're gonna be reading poems and looking at art, and this is somehow going to make us doctors or something. There is science to support using humanities to help teach physicians. One study shows that reading literature over nonfiction or pulp fiction can change something called theory of mind, which is a person's intuitive understanding of their own and other people's minds, mental states, beliefs, and thoughts. Basically, it helps us understand ourselves and others on a deeper level. It did show some positive data to show that folks who read a literary story changed in their ability to then judge someone else. The hypothesis behind it, which is really cool, is that literary fiction makes you think complexly about people. As does this iconic painting, whose subject appears to be the blonde princess. Who or what do you think is the subject of the painting? I would think it's the, the young girl in the center. Until you realize everyone is looking outside the painting that Diego Velazquez has even painted himself into it. And he's not painting the princess. It's a small detail that reveals the truth. If you look at the painting, right in the center of it is a mirror. And you see two little figures in the mirror. And those two figures in the mirror are actually a reflection of the king and queen. 
As the viewer, you realize where you're standing. That we are in the same spot as the king and queen, which is really quite remarkable. So how does this relate to being a better psychiatrist? It's easy for physicians to say, ah, this is pretty clear, you are the patient, you are the one with the illness. This painting says it's much more complicated than that, that the nature of the relationship brings us together and that it decenters us and it makes the, the future physician, hopefully, um, think more complexly about the nature of the relationship. The students then listened to the song Strange Fruit, made famous when Billie Holiday sang it in 1939. It's a song that waxes poetic about scenes of the gallant South, but the title, Strange Fruit, refers to what's hanging from the poplar trees. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. You're talking about a man who's been murdered, and, you know, he's just strange fruit. New York City school teacher Abel Mirapol wrote the song about the 1930 lynching of Thomas Shipp and Abram Smith. The visceral contrast between the beauty and cruelty of the South speaks to the contrast within all of us. Mm -hmm. The very ugly sides of human nature. And, and how absolutely intertwined they mm -hmm. are. Stories are enormously complicated, enormously so. And we need to wrestle with all of those complications. And this song says, look deeper, look deeper, look deeper. Literally, look at the roots of things. We need to continually do that. As the semester draws to a close, the impact on future psychiatrists is evident. The humanities play a role in your life. I think that what this course has allowed us to do is explore stories in a way and lis listen for stories more than, than sort of through our routine training that we receive. I feel like we can find a human story um, everywhere. The arts don't just help make better physicians, they can make for a better, deeper human experience in a world where nothing is simple going home and reading a poem or going to an art museum and seeing an art or going seeing art or going to, to a play and, and seeing that or listening to music. If you really sort of try to involve yourself in it, it helps you look at the world in different, more complex, more nuanced sorts of ways. And I come from a position where complexity and nuance is, is really important. I think making things simple doesn't often help things. Life is moving faster than ever. With technology at our fingertips, and often in front of our faces, it can sometimes feel like we're skimming over the surface of our lives at warp speed. Investing time and attention in a book or a piece of art or music is an investment that gives a return by helping us better connect with others and ourselves. That's gonna do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on Your Fantastic Mind.